Welcome to the Korean Presbyterian Church of Pine Ellis Park. It's the English Bible study service that takes place when a pastor is not available to give us a regular sermon, which is coming up on this Sunday, September the 29th. Uh, we will not have uh, a pastor. So we will be showing this for our uh, service. I will be sending out uh, a copy of the PowerPoint in an email, and I will be uploading this to YouTube and to Facebook. Okay, without further delay, we are going to continue the Lord's Prayer, Foundational Tools for Our Faith by Dr. Kevin DeYoung. And we are here. Uh, now let's see if it'll work. There you go. We're going to start right here. But first, let's have the Bible study opening prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you today in humility and faith. We thank you for all you have given us and the many blessings in our lives. We ask for your guidance and strength. Show us the way and fill us with courage and wisdom. Help us to remember your love and grace and to be faithful in our service to you. Give us the patience and understanding to face life's challenges with grace. We ask these things in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. <clears throat> I do have one thing, uh, a prayer I've got to locate off of my phone, but I, uh, I plan to, to show it to you in cha uh, uh, Chapter 6. So uh, I'll be looking that up and getting it to print it out. Anyway, all right. Remember, the uh, Lord's Prayer is found in two locations, Matthew Chapter 6, verse 9 to 13, and Luke Chapter 11, verse 1 to 4. Uh, of course, remember that all the quotes that uh, we have are quotes uh, by Dr. Kevin DeYoung, uh, except where noted otherwise. Uh, the Lord's Prayer uh, teaches us how to pray. That's the whole purpose of it. All right, the forgiveness we need to give. Uh, we talked earlier about forgiveness. And uh, you cannot be forgiven if you do not forgive. So in this second half of the fifth petition, the prayer states, Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. This is in Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. We must forgive others as much as we ask God to forgive us. It's as simple as that. Plain. Some thoughts about forgiveness. One, it is not the absence of consequences. That because you're forgiven doesn't mean you might not be punished. It does not eliminate all authority structures. This refers explicitly to the church and its duty to judge. And number three, it is not the complete absence of any judgment. There is a right way to judge and a wrong way. We are good to avoid judgmentalism, which is seeing things in a negative way. But they believe only what is critical and always assume the worst of others' motives. This is not the same thing as making a wise evaluation. So what is forgiveness? Forgiveness comes in three forms. Revenge. This pertains to all. When we forgive, we will not seek revenge. Punishment. This will not always be removed from, for God desires that his law be executed. And the last one, number three, judgment. This will not always be remitted. For God who profits falsehood, 
No. <laughs> For God who prohibits falsehood. Sorry about that. Prohibits. Will not have us judge of knaves. And this is a tricky, deceitful person from Merriam-Webster. Uh, as honest men. But the design that we should distinguish the good from the bad. So forgiveness is not always the same as forgiving. And forgiveness is not therapeutic. For this says that God should be forgiven. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a radical. Since God does no wrong, he is perfect. Therefore, he does not need to apologize for doing something wrong. Because he can't. The Bible is clear that the unforgiving person is an unforgiven person. Simply put, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. Essentially, we are asking God to treat us as we treat others. It is not a tit for tat. Matthew chapter 6 verse 12 is not talking about a legalistic formula. It is a statement of recognition. Only the one who, for, who forgives can expect to be forgiven. That's really simple, and I've never thought of it that way, because I haven't looked into it that deeply until now. Our plea. This last thing Jesus wants to teach us in the Lord's Prayer is that we need our Father's help because we are stalked by danger around us. Now, what do I mean? Very simply, once you have acknowledged your sins, asked for forgiveness, and accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are now an important target for Satan's demons. That's right. When you're another believer, when you haven't repented, when you haven't acknowledged, and when you haven't accepted, they don't have to worry about it. Because you're not a Christian. You're not a follower. You're not true. As soon as you do, oh, you go to the top of the list. So bear that in mind. And that may be the answer for some of you who have accepted and find things not going quite your way. Uh, that's probably because demons are getting in there and mucking things up. And God is giving you the opportunity to work through this and learn how to do it. Remember, he will only give you as much uh, 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 what's the word here? Uh, as much uh, things to get done as you can handle. Okay? Can't think of the right word. Sorry. I'll come up with it later. Uh, but, but that's basically it. Uh, you're being tested, but the limit will only be so high because God will only go as high as you can handle. And that's true. Uh, sometimes it gets really close, but that's true. The sixth petition. Lead us. The sixth petition states, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Matthew chapter 6, verse 13. This is the third and final petition in this second of two petitions. Each one has three parts. All of the petitions are focused on God and second on us. One, our Father Creator and the Creator of our daily bread. Two, God the Son gives atonement for our sins. And three, God the Spirit fills us with power to live a holy life. In 1 John 1, chapter 1, verse 7, it states, Once set free, we want to walk in the light as he is in the light. These three requests give us a voice for the three things every human being needs. The first one, provision. The second one, pardon. The third one, protection. The three Ps. This is to remind us that we live a life of dependence, 
that's in danger. Tempted and tried. This request is simple. Lead us not into temptation. However, we must define what temptation is. The Bible speaks of at least three different kinds of temptation. The first one. Sometimes temptation means trials or testing. This temptation can result in suffering that can cause us to doubt God. It can also cause us to compromise with the word. It can even result in giving us uh, up, uh, giving up our faith. The trials themselves are not sinful. In James chapter 1, verse 2, it states, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet your trials of various kinds. The Greek word is pier as mois. I don't know how to do Latin, uh, Greek very well. This is the same word, verb, form in James chapter 1, verse 13, which is translated several times as tempted or tempts. So you see there's a pattern here. And again, I brought this up before and told you, but uh, when you're doing uh, research, sometimes you have to get additional resources. And I have found in the last couple of years one of the most important is a Hebrew, Greek, English Bible. Because Aramaic and Hebrew were the first languages used to write the Bible. Then Greek, then Latin. So you need to know the Hebrew words and what they mean and then how the Greek translation has picked up the words and put it down to really get the truth behind what's said. Very important. I have one. So, we will come to suffering, tribulation, and trials that we are called to endure. Yep. Nobody told your mom when you were born that uh, you have a warranty that life will be great and everything will work perfectly. Ah, doesn't work. Okay. There is suffering, tribulation, and trials that we have to endure. Second, temptation can also be thought of as enticement to sin. Jesus was without sin, yet he was tested in the wilderness by the devil. That is from an exter uh, external temptation. That's supposed to be Anne, sorry. He was used, he was tested in every way imagined, yet he was without sin or lust for anything. And that we know from the temptation of Christ in the wilderness. Even though he was human, the temptations uh, he endured were not identical to the temptations that we endure. Satan tempted Jesus by entreaties and suggestions, as we are from the outside world's lies and promises. Number three, there are temptations that arise from within such as those allurements to sin. They can originate from the power of indwelling sin. This is found in James chapter 1, verse 14, which states, Each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desires. Christ did not experience this because he had no sinful lust. Jesus was only tempted by the first two. We are tested by all three. So when we pray, what does it mean to lead us not into temptation? 
Certainly, it does not mean to entice us into sin. James chapter 1, verse 13 states, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. That is not possible in any way. What happens is brought on probably by our decision, and God chooses not to intervene. We are tempted to show where we stand. Jesus was not saying, do not tempt me. He is saying, do not allow me to be near the assure of sin. Do not bring me near the devil. Do not permit me to be in a situation where enticement to sin will be greater than I can bear. So in this verse, we can see the meaning more clearly. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 states, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Jesus had one special mission to fulfill here. He had to succeed where Adam failed. It was important for Jesus to prove that he was faithful when Israel proved faithless. He was led to a place of testing and temptation. He teaches us to pray, Father, do not lead me into that same haunted wilderness. This does not mean we will not be tempted. Job was allowed to be tempted, but he passed through it and remained faithful. We pray for a life set apart from sinning. The Hebrew language uses parallelism to say one thing and then to say it again with different language. Lead us not into temptation is a poetic way of expressing the second part of the petition to deliver us from evil. Basically, it is a request for spiritual protection. Dr. DeYoung believes that the word evil actually means from the evil one. That is, of course, the devil. The Greek word tau Honro can be a neutered noun that means evil or a masculine noun meaning the evil one. This has been used before and Dr. Jung believes that it does mean the evil one, Satan. It just seems to live to fit better uh, to me. I, I, I like it. I think that's what it is. I think that's who it is. I have nothing to do with evil. It's the evil one. It's Satan. He and his demons. That's what they are about. And that's what they're doing. Dr. Young points out that he also believes that this is a request to keep me out of the path of sin and keep me safe from the devil's snares. So, our prayer to our Father in heaven to be our refuge, our rock, and our rescue. The devil tempted Jesus the same way he tempts us, with pleasure, pride, and power. In part six, we will look closer at pleasure, pride, and power as we finish up our Bible study of the Lord's Prayer. So that is going to be the end of part five. I finally have had a chance to get it done. I've been working very hard to make sure that I had the equipment working right, but it does. So, I, I, I'm excited. I'll be putting this up very shortly and sending out the uh, PowerPoint so everybody can be ready for Sunday that, that wants to maybe uh, uh, look at it at that time. Uh, uh, 
and uh, of course uh, it will already be up so you can pull that on Sunday and get a uh, print out your PowerPoint and you can go right along as I'm doing it at the church but of course we, we aren't st live streaming so you won't be able to see that okay uh, our closing prayer dear Lord thank you for gathering us in this Bible study we thank you for the opportunity to come together to learn from one another and to grow in faith we ask that you will bless this time create a spirit of unity among us and open our words and hearts to one another we offer this prayer in the name of your son our lord and savior jesus christ amen okay very good i'm so happy that i have finally gotten this done uh and that just goes to show you that the lord will help he's there to be with you you know i i was having problems in all kinds of situations with the new setup uh, but it is now functioning correctly and that's because the lord knows i need to put this up for sunday there you go we hope to see you uh on the next episode uh part six and we'll be finishing that up i've got to get on my phone and find that uh that prayer that i ran across because i'm telling you it's perfect it, it matches right with this okay have a good uh, rest of the week and an outstanding weekend, and we will see you on the next time. Take care.